was thinking, was this where my life was going to finish? This young girl just plays on my mind a lot. She just seemed to be more helpless than anybody else. I was petrified. I can't even swim. Time didn't exist. It's just a case of trying to survive. Sometimes you have to make a choice, and you said, okay, now I'll take the next one, and he's gone. In those few seconds, he drowned. Dit zijn de stemmen van mensen die hun leven voor goed zagen veranderen toen de Herald of Free Enterprise kapseisde voor Zeebrugge. Zij hebben het overleefd, maar veel anderen zijn omgekomen in de zwaarste Britse scheepsramp sinds de Titanic. Deze documentaire is gebaseerd op hun getuigenis over de ramp, die op 6 maart 1987 het leven heeft gekost aan 193 passagiers en bemanningsleden. Het gezin Pinnels maakt zich op voor een daguitstap, maar hun plezierreisje zal een gevecht om hun leven worden in het koude Noordzeewater. Waar ben Friday. I've got lectures all day. Oh, come on, the break will do you good. Yeah, Chris is coming, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to phone in sick. Oh, come on, it'll be fun. Okay, okay. The Sun newspaper were offering um, for a pound a person to go um, to see Brugger, so we decided to save up the tokens. You think it was a lovely day out. If I hadn't have got the tickets, this wouldn't have happened. Mm. Yep, should be with you about midday. Uh, one one o'clock at the latest. Yeah, it shouldn't take too long to unload. Right, okay. Brian Gibbons is international vrachtwagenchauffeur. De rit die hij al zo vaak heeft gemaakt, zal deze keer het uiterste van hem vergen. No problem. See you Friday. Okay, bye. Dad, can we have this one? No, darling, we haven't got the room. And anyway, who's going to take it for walks and clean up after it? We will. No, your mother and I'll end up doing it. Sharon? Yeah? That was the chaps in Belgium. They want the carpets at the end of the week. I'm a firm believer that it's mind over matter that I'm still breathing. I'm still alive. While I'm still breathing, there's a chance. We hadn't been for a holiday for a long time, and I thought it'd be nice to take the children. We were all together, which was nice. Evelyn's daughter Fiona heeft zich pas verloofd met Jonathan Reynolds. Hey, my darling. Oh, thanks for a star. <laughs> Look, I gotta go. Oh. Take care. Well, don't forget to call us when you get back. Bye. Voor de dagjesmensen als de Pinnels begint de uitstap op de Herald of Free Enterprise, een roll-on, roll-off veerboot van 8000 ton. De ferries zijn een snel groeiende industrie. Ze vervoeren jaarlijks 15 miljoen mensen over het kanaal. De Herald is eigendom van de rederij Townsend Torsen, die begin 1987 voor 600 miljoen euro is overgenomen door concurrent P&O. Ik heb deze company closely en frankly, gentlemen, het is in pretty poor shape. Therefore, I'm proposing some radical changes with immediate effect. De nieuwe topman van PNO, Peter Ford, is nog maar negen dagen aan het werk als de ramp gebeurt. I'm restructuring senior management. I'm afraid this will mean losing most of you. I've asked my PA to arrange individual meetings with you all over the next few days. I can't pretend that we were prepared for the, the avalanche that descended on us of human emotion and misery. Het is half zeven in de vooravond, 6 maart. Brian Gibbons heeft de tapijten afgeleverd in België en is onderweg naar huis. Tijdens de overtocht wil hij wat slaap inhalen. I was actually the uh, fourth vehicle to be loaded onto uh, the ferry. Which gave me plenty of time then to uh, go and get a shower, find a, a, a cabin, um, go to the driver's restaurant. Brian wordt bediend door steward Henry Graham. Hi right, mate. There you go mate. Cheers. I'm going to get my head down for a couple of hours. If it's not too rough, it'll be fine. It's pretty calm tonight. I'd literally come on the ship 
power cup, lock up, up the stairs, stay in the restaurant for something to eat. So I was usually one of the first to actually start working. Na hun uitstapje in Zeebrugge komen de panels weer aan boord voor de overtocht naar huis. Oh, we'll watch the bag if you want to go get something to eat. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure, you go ahead. We've already eaten. Keep an eye on Heidi. Come on, you. Till a bit. Bye. De Herald maakt vier overtochten per dag. De bemanning moet alles strikt op tijd laten verlopen. Eerst de stuurman Leslie Sable dirigeert de laatste twintig auto's naar binnen. Hij moet controleren of de boegdeuren wel gesloten zijn. De Herald zal over een kwartier afvaren. I've had such a lovely day. Yeah, me too. So you're glad you came then? Yeah, you're right as always. De hut van Brian Gibbons ligt onder het autodek. Captain, officers and crew, we'd like to welcome you on board the Herald of Free Enterprise. Stand by for and aft. Hi, hi, standing by for us. Standing by, aft. Assistent bootsman Mark Stanley was even gaan rusten toen de Herald aanlegde in Zeebrugge. Hij zou nu op post moeten zijn om de boegdeuren dicht te doen, maar hij slaapt nog. Eerst de stuurman Leslie Sable moet controleren of de deuren dicht zijn, maar hij heeft haast om naar de brug te gaan. Hij gaat weg van het autodek als ze nog open zijn. Kapitein David Lowry moet aan zijn eerste stuurman vragen of de deuren dicht zijn. Maar dat doet hij niet. Kapitein Lowry vaart af om vijf over zeven met vijf minuten vertraging. We hadn't had any problems with the ship, to my knowledge. I mean, obviously, if there was an engineering problem, rumors used to get around, whispers would sort of go, but nobody said, oh, we've got a problem with number one engine or, or anything like that. So as far as I was aware, we were just setting off on another four and a half hour crossing across the channel back to Dover. The Herald has 460 passengers, 80 bemanningsleden, 81 auto's and 47 vrachtwagens on board. As the boat pulls from the harbour, you would you'd sometimes feel a, a bumps as she probably hit the uh, harbour wall a little bit and one or two buffers. Um, you would hear the engines or the turbines or whatever they call them start to build up speed. And you would get a general feeling of, of, the, of the movement of the boat. Basically, then you would try and sleep. <laughs> I remember the ship leaving because we were in the cafeteria at the time it started to sail. Amanda, Wayne, Chris and I were on having our meal by then. And um, it was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone was enjoying themselves. It was a beautiful day and we all loved it. De Herald stoomt op naar de open zee en versnelt naar 18 knopen. Maar de boegdeuren staan nog altijd open. De ferry creëert een boeggolf en die stuurt honderden tonnen zeewater het autodek binnen. You tend to get the feel of the ship. You know how she, how she operates, how she's moving, what certain. You, you can even tell which direction the waves are coming from when you've been on the ship a long time. And um, it just got to a point where the ship was sort of listening over and it just, it wasn't right, it didn't feel right. Dit is meteen het begin van het einde. Het water in het autodek heeft de Herald al zo onstabiel gemaakt dat hij 30 graden overhelt naar bakboord. I hope it's not like this all the way home. You alright? So oh, what's happening? All the plates came down, all the tea we had came down and hot tea on top of our laps. Enkele seconden later richt de ferry zich weer op om dan weer naar bakboord te kantelen. Deze keer komt hij niet meer terug. When the floor was coming up in front of me, I was still sat in the seat at the time. And when the floor actually came up, I thought, 
This is not right, something's wrong here, you know. She went to go to one side quite badly, and then she went over another way, and that actually threw me out of the bunk. De Herald kapseist in nog geen minuut. Het is 7 uur 28. De ferry wordt in duisternis gedompeld als het water kortsluiting veroorzaakt in de elektrische hoofd- en noodcircuits. The water was actually sort of coming through the windows. Then I knew that this was definitely not right. This, this shouldn't be happening. Gezinnen die samen zaten in de cafetaria worden nu door de kracht van het water uit elkaar gerukt. Ik was petrified. Ik kan niet even zwemmen. Je hebt geen idee wat het was. Like. Al de schreeuwen, de schreeuwen, mensen in de water en je probeert niet te lopen. People you sat with going over on the ferry, you know, watched them, spoke to them. And people in wheelchairs just going down into the water. What could we do? Nothing. I could hardly manage to save myself. I can remember going down for like the third time, and in my mind, it was sort of um, not going to make it. It seemed strange, but I had this sort of like thing come over me in my mind. It was sort of like hills and everything was bright and flowers and and all that, and I believed that, you know, I was going, I was going up. All of a sudden, I sort of came back round again. And then, of course, it was just mayhem in there. It was an awful panic. The noises were horrific. to the, the top set of tables, there's quite a wide gap. There's an, uh, um, an aisle. Uh, I sort of tried, tried to jump over, but I sort of misjudged it and missed the other side. And I ended up sort of plunging into the water, but I was, I was only in there briefly. <laughs> I was out of there rather sharpish because it was cold. I was on my own by then. Somehow, I don't know how I managed, but I scrambled up and got a hold of one of the tables. And I must have held on for a long time because the water kept coming in and out over me, but I still held on. And um, then I must have climbed up a little bit onto this ledge and was too frightened to move because down below, if you came off the ledge, you were back in the water. There was a noise of water rushing in from different areas. I actually didn't hit the cabin uh, straight away. Um, there was an awful smell of uh, the sewerage from the, the toilet systems on the boat and um, other different smells, which could be the fuel from vehicles and everything else. I'd managed to open the door of the cabin and everything was in blackness and um, somebody grabbed my ankle. Oh, uh, shit! We're sinking! There's another couple of guys out there. You okay? Ah, uh, oh, oh, my father! Ah! I don't know, maybe we hit something. It was the doors, they weren't shut. What do you mean? The doors were open as we left the port. I saw them. The mannen zitten in de val. Niets is nog hetzelfde. 
Unfortunately, the, the Japanese must have stepped out of the cabin and, and fallen down the um, corridor, which would be like a well. Um, we shouted, uh, myself, uh, Jock, and uh, the other chap shouted, and um, we heard him shout, I can't get out, and then the shouting stopped. Shit. How are we going to get out of here? De ferry kapseist zo snel dat de kapitein geen noodsignaal kan uitzenden. Gelukkig slaat de bemanning van een baggerboot alarm als ze de lichten van de herald zien verdwijnen. Er wordt meteen een reddingsoperatie opgezet onder leiding van de gouverneur van West-Vlaanderen. De eerste hulp was de helikopter. Die uh, was above de herald of free enterprise at 6.55 p.m. And that gave enormous courage to the passengers and to the crew. They were discovered. De helikopter geeft de positie van de Herald door aan de zeemachtbasis van Zeebrugge, waar op dat moment een oefening aan de gang is. We thought it was part of the exercise, of course. And then the guy said, no, this is, uh, this is, not, this is not an exercise, this is no play, this is a real thing. You know, the next, there is a ferry just capsized outside Zeebrugge. And if you see the, the, the circumstances, like, you know, clear night, good visibility, uh, smooth sea, no wind, cold of course, and you're completely surprised. Said, How can this happen? But it did. Luitenant Ter Zee, Guy Kouwenberg en twee collega duikers staan binnen een uur op de gekantelde romp van de ferry. We smashed those windows to have access to the ship. And we lowered the ladder. And of course there we could see that there were a lot of people in need in the water. In de ondergelopen passagiersruimte ziet Guy Kouwenberg hoe mensen zich vastklampen aan de reddingsvesten die ze niet eens hebben kunnen aantrekken. Ik was thinking that I wouldn't get to my next birthday. And basically, um, was this where um, my life was going to finish? Um, excuse the expression, I was, wasn't physically, but come quite close to messing my pants. Because I was so frightened. Do you reckon the water's still rising? Yeah. I've got a lighter you could use. No, wait, wait! Can't you smell petrol fumes? You might blow us up. Look, if I throw something in, we'll know how close it is. Yeah, I've got a bit. You got it? Yeah, there, yeah. There, there. Oh, cool. <laughs> I've also found your duty for you, so. I'm going to go down like a true Scott. Oh, shit. The decision was made that because I wasn't injured, for me to attempt to climb out the cabin and try and get away from the water, it's a case of survival. I must survive. I need to get out of here. I need to get home for my family. Binnen in de Herald zitten 540 mensen in de val. Buiten probeert een internationale reddingsoperatie koortsachtig om overlevenden te redden uit het koude Noordzeewater. Water behind it. Uh, there can't be. We're above the water, aren't we? I don't know. We could be in an air pocket. We know there's water below us. Open it. It could be our only way out. 
Right, okay. All agreed? Yeah, okay. That's fresh air! Leave it open! If you have just your normal clothes on in water with 4 degrees centigrade, uh, th there, isn't, there isn't a lot of time left to save yourself. People that are still screaming, you can consider them as being in, in a still rather good situation. Uh, they're better off than those who are really um, not saying an anything anymore. And uh, uh, when you look at them and, and you see that at the point that they're going to drown, you know, so you have to get them as, as fast as possible out of the water. Nu de reddingsactie op snelheid komt, brengen sleeboten de eerste slachtoffers aan wal. De politie vordert autobussen om ze te laten evacueren uit de haven. We wanted to make uh, one line from the Herald of the Enterprise for all the people, one line to the hospital. So we need die buses as quick as possible. Before the first tugboat came in with injured people. And the wet people. On the road at 8 o'clock next Friday. We now go over to the newsroom for a news report from Nicholas Witchell. Good evening. A major rescue operation is underway tonight off the coast of Zeebrugge. The British ferry Herald of Free Enterprise, part of the Townsend Torreson fleet, has capsized Alan! offshore. She left Zeebrugge Quick! at 10 to 7 this evening, bound for Dover. Come the look at this! British rescue services are on the sea. Alan! Doctors have been sent from Aria look. stations on the south Quick. coast. And we understand that what ferry was Jodison on? Close to the ferry. Didn't Fiona well, say they, they were going to Ostend? Isn't that what she said? Ostend, God, yes, I hope so. More details in the nine o'clock news on BBC One. But actually, while watching the television, I think a lot of mothers would know the feeling when something like this happens, but I just felt as though I'd had all my inside ripped out, and I knew, I knew then, that something had happened. Yes, I'm watching it now. How the hell did it happen? Okay, I'm booked on a flight from Manchester, but I won't get there till tomorrow morning. I'll call you as soon as I land. Goodbye. I just knew that there was a major incident. It was only later in the evening that I became aware of the scale of the disaster and the possible loss of life. And of course then I realized what a horrendous situation had arisen and what a, you know, that we were going to have to try and deal with. I've got a very vivid picture in my mind of people actually pressed up against the glass panels underneath hands and faces I'm actually under the glass panels. I wasn't actually in the cafeteria itself, I was standing on top of it. I was actually trying to get somebody to move along a bit further so you can get them to an opening to get them out. They would just like stay where they were. The only way that I could actually sort of help these people would have been to plunge myself back into the water and put my own life in balance. Um, and there was something at the back of your mind was saying, well, you, you just don't do that, whether it's the training, whether it's national preservation or, or what, I don't know, but it just didn't seem the right thing to me to do at that time. Looking back at it, I wish I had it done. Henry Graham can enkele passagiers bevrijden die vastzitten onder het glas, maar de meesten komen om. Zelfs de ervaren duiker Guy Kouwenberg bezwijkt bijna aan de kou als hij passagiers probeert te redden. He fell back on top of me. That was the moment I experienced how cold the water was. Because just for easy working, 
and I didn't wear any hood, so my head wasn't had no protection against the cold water. And uh, my suit itself, the, the, the zipper was a little bit open, you know. So I got all this cold water into my suit in the inside. It was really cold. My glasses! For God's sake, where's my glasses? Forget about your glasses. Take him up! Please, <coughs> my sight. I had to sort of try and get my own head sorted out because I had to take control of the situation where I was on this island, stranded with a, a whole bunch of strangers who I was going to expect to do exactly what I told them to do. My name's Henry Graham. I'm a crew member. I'm going to try and get you out. I was thinking about the others, and I, the one I thought wouldn't survive was Wayne. He could swim, but not terribly well. Being the youngest, I thought he was the one I'd probably lose. Het nieuws van de zware ramp verspreidt zich. De noodnummers worden oversteld met vragen van mensen die proberen te achterhalen wat er met hun geliefden is gebeurd. Up to 400 people are believed to be trapped below decks of a British North Sea car ferry. But nearly 300 people have been rescued by fleets of small boats. Hello. It's Paul. Have you heard anything? No, we've been trying, but we can't get through. Yeah, we're watching it now. They say there's lots of survivors. Okay, call me if you hear anything. I'm going to try again now. Okay, bye. Hopeless. Keep trying, darling. The first thing you would have done if you'd have been all right is to uh, ring us and say, look, don't worry, I'm okay. And... We just didn't get that, so uh, I think we knew virtually straight away. But we sat up all night um, waiting for news. Brian Gibbons probeert een uitweg te vinden. Hij is de enige hoop voor Jock en Roger die beneden in de hut vastzitten. How are you doing down there? Okay. But the films are still pretty bad. It's better with the door open. You all right, Jock? Yeah, I'm fine. The whiskey's helping. Roger. Roger. Yeah? I'm gonna see what's on the other side of this door. When I go through, I won't be able to hold it open. Yeah, okay. I'm going through now. Shout me if the air gets too bad and I'll come back and open the door. <laughs> if he's fucked off. No, he won't do that. But I hope he doesn't end up like the other poor bastard. <laughs> I sort of felt pipe work. There was pipes above me, so I clung onto the pipes above me and stood on what I felt with, or thought was pipes. And as I sort of moved along, I'd only probably gone a few foot, I sort of almost crossed hands and I felt I got a watch on. I thought, that's going to save us. The watch is the answer. If I can tap with the watch, that's the answer. And uh, trying to survive, I was tapping with the watch. Not Morse code, because I don't know how to tap Morse code, but just trying to tap tunes or tap something. And as the watch was breaking, and my thing, I could feel a watch breaking between my, my finger and my thumb, I'd got a pair of underpants on. I kept putting the broken bits down in the front of my underpants, thinking that if I lose my watch or the bits to tap with, that's lessened our chance of getting out of here. Op de romp van de Herald worden de kapitein en de eerste stuurman bevrijd uit de brug. Andere bemanningsleden die de ramp overleefd hebben doen mee aan de reddingsactie. Een van hen is assistent bootsman Mark Stanley. 
Let's, let's have a look at your arm. Uh, this is pretty deep. You need to go ashore now. Well, there's more people down there. Leave it to us. You should be in hospital. I can't leave now. Look, come on, you've done all you can. Come on, the doors. I left the doors open. Look, you've lost a lot of blood. You're in shock, huh? Let's get you ashore. Then I sort of looked up and sort of shaded my eyes against my face against anything that was coming down. And then I heard a voice. And a voice I recognized it was John Butler. John! It's me, H! Henry! Okay, H! We're on the sand, mate! We ain't going nowhere! Oh. The elation. I can't I honestly can't describe it. It was just so wonderful to know that that was it. The worst was was over. It was just a case now of, of trying to get as many people as possible out. Managed to get a rope down to us. Hang on there, right? It was the best piece of rope I've ever seen in my life. Get off! I'm not going to do it like that. How are you doing, Hank? Ready to pull this one? Yeah, OK. Look, women and children first. Get your turn, OK? Come on, Alfred. Try not to hurt the baby. As the clock really was ticking, you know, you could see people were really getting slower, less noise. Quite a few were, were giving up their fight to survive because, because of the cold, you know. Sometimes you have to make a choice. You have somebody just in front of you and the rope comes down, you make a knot around them, they go out of the water and you have made your choice between two or three people. And you turn around again and you said, okay, now I take the next one. And he's gone, you know. In those few seconds, he drawn. I didn't volunteer to go for a long, long time. Must have been one of the last ones to go up in the rope. Because I thought, I can't hold on to this rope. You know, it's just like a rope coming down. You have to get your legs round it and hold on. What's the other people doing and go back right. in the water? Okay, you ready? Come on. What if I fall? Oh, it's all right, I'm not going to fall. Come on. Come on, it's all right. I know what to do. Come on. Stand there. That's it. Arms up. Shut your arms up. That's it. That's it. Good. 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 Arms down. Arms by your sides. Okay, John, last one! Evelyn en haar zoon Wayne worden naar de vloot van kleinere boten rond de ferry gebracht. Ze komen aan boord van een sleeboot en die zit al vol overlevenden. We passed one little space and who was in there but Chris and Amanda. They were both in there. So we went in with them and they gave us down some blankets. And so I knew then that we were safe. That just left Fiona, Jonathan and Heidi then. Jonathan Reynolds. He's 19 years old. He's got dark hair, um, slim build. Um, he's with his fiance, Fiona Pinnells. Oh, my God. Um, do you know how he is? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, um, I'll ring back later. Thank you. Thank you very much. They've got him. He's on the list of survivors. <laughs> yeah, before before I went out myself, um, I had a last look around the area that I was in. There was a, a young girl actually in the water, 
I could just sort of make it out and I could hear her. This young girl just plays on my mind a lot. When I did uh, get up on the side of the ship, I, I've seen one of the divers, uh, and I sort of said to them, there's, there's a young girl in the forward observation lounge, told them exactly where she was. Um, she just seemed to be more helpless and, and in need of more help than anybody else. Guy Kouwenberg verlaat het wrak als er geen overlevenden meer te redden zijn. Na drie uur in het water heeft hij veertig mensen boven gehaald en veel lichamen geborgen. I didn't wear any gloves. So if, if you have three hours in this water without gloves, your hands are they, they're blue and black, you know. They're, they're, because you have no more, um, your blood circulation is completely nearly stopped. Als hij nu valt, is er niemand meer die hem kan redden. The most dangerous thing I've ever done is climbing that ladder to get out of the ship myself. I could hear um, some of the devastation that was going on above us and around us, the panic. Um, People trying to survive. Rescue services. Um, the worrying thing personally was, um, and I had to tell the other two lads back in the cabin, was um, when we stopped hearing the helicopters come in. Sorry. They've gone. They don't know we're here. Keep tapping. No one knows we're here. I didn't know whether 10 minutes had passed, 10 hours had passed, 10 days had passed. It was just a... I put myself in a psychological barrier between that and I needed to survive. I needed to do something to help us get out of that situation. Brian, are you married? Yeah. You got kids? Yes, yeah, six. Right. Well, keep tapping for them. In a normal day, you wouldn't think that, oh, um, perhaps I shouldn't have uh, said that the, the, the children couldn't have a pet dog. Perhaps I shouldn't have said um, to the wife, I wanted to watch that television programme last night, whatever. Silly little things, but you think about those things when you're in a situation where you don't think you never see them again. Are they sure? Have you asked them to check? Ask them to check again. Okay, call me when you've got news. De lijst van slachtoffers klopt niet. Net als veel andere gezinnen krijgen de Reynolds eerst te horen dat hun familieleden in veiligheid zijn. En later dat dat misschien niet zo is. When they did check into it it was an older gentleman by the name of Reynolds which was a bit cruel for us but um, anyway it wasn't Jonathan it was someone else so um, but it was hopeless trying to get any information it was complete it absolute chaos. And utter chaos it was absolute Brian, did you hear that? No, what? I heard tapping. That's me. I'm still tapping. No, it's not you. It's louder. Hello? Is there anyone down there? Yeah. Yeah, we're down here. Hello? We're down here, yes. yeah. Hello? Yes. Down, down here. here. Hello? 
and that was the first time which sounds a little silly that I'd felt for the bits of my watch in my underpants. The, the crazy things go through your mind and your mind makes your body do such stupid things. And I sort of felt, and I thought, yeah, I've still got them. But what, then a split second later, what difference does it make? Somebody said hello to us, we're okay. How many people are down there? Three! There was another chap, he fell into the water. I did say to one of the rescuers, um, if I get into the harness, if, if you want to lower me down, I'll have a look. And he said, well, no, no, you're not doing that. You're coming out. And the minute I got the harness on and the door sort of then slammed closed, it was a whoosh. They just whistled me straight up onto a, another section. I think it's a feeling of, I'm here. I'm alive, I'm about. Psychologically, you're struggling for so much time to survive, and the only reason we want to survive is to stand up and be counted in life, so to speak. Brian Gibbons, Jock Calderwood and Roger Broomfield are the last three passengers who live out of the Herald of Free Enterprise. They have hebben bijna seven uur overleefd in het wrak. And then came the message that the boat was moving, short movings on the boat. So we feel the danger that the boat, uh, that the boat slipped from the sandbank in deep water. Um, they asked the permit to, le, to leave the boat and I gave the permission at uh, two o'clock in the morning, English time. Once everything stops and you realize what it, what it all was, all the, the dead people, um, those you have saved, but those you, you didn't, that makes quite an impression on you. De families van vermiste passagiers worden verzocht om Sander een daags naar de geïmproviseerde mortuaria te komen. Evelyn Pinnels heeft geen enkel nieuws over haar dochters Heidi en Fiona en over Fiona's verloofde Jonathan. They said, well, someone like me or Chris would have to go and look at all these bodies and see if he could identify them. I wouldn't go, but Chris went. There rows and rows of people um, just laying there, and um, I walked, um, I walked up and down, and um, I managed to find um, her two daughters. Said, um, he said, yeah, Fiona and Heidi were there. <laughs> I was thinking about Jonathan's mum, you know, what she going to think, because I took them on this holiday, on this day out, I thought, oh, it's going to happen, you know, because I'll get the blame. Of course, I didn't, but that's what I thought. And, of course, no one could find Jonathan. It was just Heidi and Fiona. And I, I honestly didn't know what had happened to Jonathan at all. I didn't know what had happened to him. But, I mean, I knew Heidi and Fiona were there. This should never have happened, it needn't have happened. With power doors being left open, it shouldn't have been left open. The boat never had a chance. I mean, the water getting in, it just all rolls to one side and what happens, the vehicles go with it and the, the weight is so enormous, it just capsized. That's exactly what happened. It was only because it was in such shallow water, it didn't turn turtle completely. Everyone wants to know if there's anything more that can be done. Anything that is required will, of course, be done. 
We're just racking our brains and our minds to see if there's anything else. And this wasn't an old ship, and they thought that they had all the latest safety devices. And I don't think anyone quite thought of this kind of speed, or perhaps this particular kind of accident. Na de schok komt de woede. De Britse bevolking wil weten hoe een veerboot kon uitvaren met de boegdeuren open. Het wordt een politieke kwestie. Townsend Thorson heeft winstbejag boven veiligheid gesteld wordt geopperd. De kersverse topman Peter Ford moet antwoorden geven. The latest, the latest information I have is that divers are still searching the Herald and more bodies are being recovered. However, it's unlikely that all of the casualties will be found until the ferry is salvaged. How long will that take? I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, but it, it, is, it is likely to be weeks rather than days. Weeks? 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 My wife and son are still on there. You're telling me they've got to stay in that bloody water. Yeah. Yeah. My family's on there. I'm assured that the salvage operation will take place just as quickly as possible. Oh, you, you bastards! All this because the doors were left open. What the hell was the captain doing? Yes. 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 That, that is something we're investigating as a matter of urgency. Onderzoek wijst uit dat de kapitein de boegdeuren niet had gecontroleerd voor het vertrek en dat er geen veiligheidsapparatuur geïnstalleerd was. I was flabbergasted. I, I just couldn't understand how it could be possible that a, a huge ship of that design with dozens of indicator lights showing you all sorts of things did not have a large indicator light to tell you that the bar doors were open. And this is, to my mind, like having a 747 without a light to tell you the undercarriage isn't down, because it has equally catastrophic consequences. The half of the 80-koppige bemanning van the Herald is dead. The overlevenden moeten naar huis over zee, langs het wrak van hun ferry. Een van hen is Henry Graham. I remember there was a camera sort of there in my face, and I was like, ah! Get that out of my face. I mean, I wasn't interested. All I wanted to do was just get to my family. I wasn't interested to talk to anybody or anything. Everybody was hoping that whoever came round next was going to be there. <coughs> Excuse me. Everybody that came round next was going to be either their wife or their husband or child or whatever. Um, and it was a bit surreal. But um, when he walked round, it was just great. Relief. <laughs> I think probably at that point, Sam. I think maybe the adrenaline had stopped flowing. So it was like tiredness, relief, um, joy, sadness, everything all thrown in all at once. Hell of a mix up. <laughs> but yeah, it was just so it was just so good to see them. It duurt zes weken voor de bergingsploegen de Herald of Free Enterprise kunnen lichten. De duikers vinden nog meer lichamen. Ten slotte wordt ook Jonathan Reynolds geborgen. Well, I didn't want. Um, I didn't want to. Excuse me. I didn't want her to see him. Then, I wanted her to remember him, as he was. When I saw him, um, and I really saw him because the undertaker says, you must see him, you'll have to see him. So he took me into the mortuary and, and showed me Jonathan. And I didn't think it was him at first. But uh, then I saw he'd got uh, a broken tooth at the front. He'd, um, he'd done playing rugby. And I knew it was him then. And when I looked closer then, I could say and tell it was him. And um, I'm glad I saw him. I'm glad you didn't. 
And he said that you've got a beautiful son. And he's all there, didn't he? Yeah. So that... But... Um, Alan said he had to do it. It was something that he and Johnny had to do together to save Sonia and I doing it. And we should remember Jonathan as he was. But when Alan used to get upset and cry, I always wondered, was he telling me the truth? Whether everything was okay? But he does assure me that it was. Oh, yes. Not an easy thing to do. In het verslag van het officiële onderzoek staat dat de hele hiërarchie van Townsend Thorson, eigendom van P&O, van hoog tot laag getuigde van een verregaande slordigheid. Maar het Britse ministerie van Transport, dat over de veiligheid van de veerboten moet waken, ontsnapt aan de kritiek. Drie jaar later wordt P&O de tweede onderneming in de Britse juridische geschiedenis die wordt aangeklaagd wegens doodslag. Zeven mannen worden aangeklaagd, onder wie assistent bootsman Mark Stanley, die toegaf dat hij de boegdeuren niet had gesloten, kapitein David Lurie en drie directeurs van het bedrijf. Uh, perhaps it sounds hard to say that you want to see someone convicted of manslaughter. But again, it's something that uh, in losing a loved one like we did, uh, all you want is justice. Justice and the knowledge that you're son had a life and it was taken from him unnecessarily and uh, when the when the trial just collapsed well you know our, our sort of world went with it for a long time it's a, a case of that the company should be made to understand that it cannot and should not and cannot and must not uh, harm people and i think that's where corporate responsibility should be uh, a part of the law of this land Controlelampen op de brug of camera's of allebei horen nu bij de standaarduitrusting. Maar Roland Roloff veerboten hebben nog altijd een fundamenteel zwak punt. Als er water in hun enorme autodekken stroomt, zinken ze al te gemakkelijk. Ik remember standing up on the, um, the cliffs at Folkestone in a nice windy day. En ik remember seeing a ship from another company um, sailing out of the harbour. Met de bouw visor en de bouw doors wide open. Oh, that made me angry. That really made me angry. I treat every day as it comes. I look forward to seeing the smile on my children's faces. I look forward to the banter with my wife and the differences of opinions. I look forward to going home. Things that happened to me during that disaster make you realise just how lucky you are to be about. You wonder how you can exists for 20 years without them. We're firm believers that the love that you share never dies and it's, it's always there. And eventually we'll all meet again and we'll have one hell of a party when we do. We'll have a lovely, lovely, lovely cuddle and, mm. and a lovely celebration. And... Uh, one heaven of a party. Eh? One heaven of a heaven party. Heaven of a party, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Love never dies, and we'll all be together again. That's what keeps us going. Mm. Juroxi dicht voor ons vanavond.